when your heart rate variability starts to go down, that means that you're fatigued enough that your body is not able to stay up with the minutia adjustments it needs to make on a regular basis. Hi, welcome to the Judy Terrell Show, where I explore topics intended to optimize every body 50, 60, 70, and above. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Judy Terrell Show. If you're joining me on this episode, then you are in my sixth series, and my topic for my sixth series is how to train as an endurance athlete if you are over 60. We've covered that endurance athletes over 60 tend to let go of the high-end training. We need more recovery time. It's harder to do. Um, so we'll let that go. And then how to build that in so that you are keeping your performance levels from deteriorating too rapidly. We talked about um, even though long endurance trainings are not as um, desirable for over 60, if you are an endurance athlete participating in half Ironmans and, and longer distance or half marathons and longer distances, then you need to have the longer trainings in. But how do you titrate that into your training plan so that you're not undermining your progress, um, unlike a younger person whose body could tolerate those longer trainings more uh, frequently? So we've covered those things in our first uh, three episodes. And now on today's episode, what I want to cover is, you know, if you are trying to follow the right balance of the protocols for the intensity uh, trainings and the long trainings um, using the two week uh, versus a one week training uh, block, um, or even if you're not, you know, how do you know when you are actually crossing over the line and falling into the law of diminishing returns on your trainings before you actually crash and burn? Because obviously when you're totally fatigued and, uh, you know, motivation for training is, is zero and you're too tired to even, you know, go out to do the training, then clearly you're over the line. But most of us would like to know when that is occurring before it happens. And so, you know, thankfully we have some great devices in modern technology that allows a athlete over 60 to be able to follow some metrics um, and, and biological readings on their own body that can let you know when you're actually you know, crossing over the line of overtraining um, before you are actually um, filling it um, totally on the outside. And so I want to cover a couple of those uh, metrics and what to use to what to be monitoring if you're over 60 and still participating in endurance events like myself. Um, I have an Ironman actually in three weeks. It'll be my 11th one. And I am four uh, months out of turning 60 years old. And so um, everything I'm recommending, I myself am, you know, using. And so I know firsthand that they work. All right. So what are some of the metrics that you want to be following so that you can start to see changes that are occurring in your own biology before you crash and burn out on the, you know, training field or in the race? Uh, there are several that I'm going to uh, talk to you about. And the first one is resting heart rate. So um, you know, when I say resting heart rate, this is your heart rate first thing in the morning before you get out of bed, but you're awake, obviously, but before you actually get up and move around because your heart rate will excel when you get out of bed. So that is your true resting heart rate. And what, you know, you want to, you have to be tracking it on a regular basis so that you kind of know where you are, um, as your normal, your training normal, because this is what happens with resting heart rate. When you are uh, beginning to fall into an overtraining um, phase, like training too much and you're not recovering, what will actually happen is your resting heart rate will actually start to go down. Now, resting heart rate going down is also a sign of adaptation to trainings. You know, you're getting fitter, your heart is getting stronger, and so it takes less beats to circulate the same amount of blood. Um, during a workout and also at rest. So you have to kind of know your normal because assuming that you're over 60 and an endurance athlete, I'm assuming that you have been doing this for a while and your resting heart rate is already at like a low level. 
So when you start to see a dip of resting heart rate, when you're already an established uh, over 60 endurance athlete, there's a little red flag, okay? And you want to then continuously be tracking that, you know, for another week, if once you start to see it, uh, it going down, because then what you'll start to see is then there's an increase of resting heart rate. You're not getting down all the way to your low resting heart rate or the dip that happens before the increase. All right. So getting an established resting heart rate. So for instance, my resting heart rate usually falls somewhere between 36 and 40 beats per minute overnight, first thing in the morning. And so when I, if I'm going to see, I might see it dip down into 34 before then I'm going to start to see an escalation of it's starting to not go below 40. It might be up to 41, 42 resting heart rate. And so with, I know now either because there's a dip down lower than my normal, or there might not be a dip down because you've already, you're you got a pretty low resting heart rate, rate like myself. And then you're just starting to see an increase in resting heart rate. And I don't mean just for one day. This is why you have to be tracking this, just like you track your metrics on your heart rate when you're doing a, you know, a hill training interval workout or a steady state, you know, zone two workout. I'm going to get to that in a minute, but um, the resting heart rate, you have to be tracking it on a daily basis so that you can see the trends because, you know, one morning of a heart rate being 42 for me doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going into an overtraining. It might be that I didn't sleep well that night or some other reason. Maybe I had caffeine that night or um, my training was late and I didn't get, my heart rate didn't get all the way down during my sleep phase. So you're tracking your resting heart rate and you're going to see either a dip down and then an increase, or you don't see that dip down. You just see an increase. And then that resting heart rate is up at another higher level than your normal for, you know, starting to go into several days in a row, a week in a row. That is your red flag that your training is now going into the red zone and you actually need more recovery time. Um, or you're doing too much intensity work and that you need to dial that down a little bit in order to get the gains for your training. So resting heart rate is one of the metrics that an over 60 endurance athlete needs to be monitoring on a regular basis. Second one is heart rate variability, okay, or variation, HRV. And what this is, is when you're rested and, and uh, recovered, your bot, your heart has a lot of variation. It kind of like it's adapting to moment, moment, moment by moment uh, demands. And it has the, it's a refreshed enough to be able to make these minutiae. It has a high variability. It's a varying with the, and I, when I say heart rate variability, it's not a huge, you know, it's not like a heart rate is varying at a huge level um, in terms of heartbeat per minute. It is varying in like a nano, you know, we, um, on a nano level. And it's, you know, it's able, it's recovered enough to be able to do you know, the variations that it needs to do every day during your trainings and the at night, overnight. And the higher your level of heart rate variability, the better recovery you're in. When your heart rate variability starts to go down, that means that you're fatigued enough that your body is not able to stay up with the minutia adjustments it needs to make on a regular basis. And that, again, is another red flag that you are either doing too much intensity with not enough, without enough recovery or too consistent of a, a training output and you need some recovery. So resting heart rate and heart rate variability are two very important uh, indices, indexes that you can be tracking as an over 60 endurance athlete to you know, get some insight into when you're overtraining and need more recovery before you, you know, hit the wall. A third one is your um, uh, um, body temperature. Um, when we start to become overtrained, your re your um, core body temperature, your re rested body temperature, which is ninety eight point six for uh, most of us, but there's variation in that some people a little bit lower, some people a little bit higher. But when you start to see an escalation of your um, resting 
body temperature, that is also an indication that you are not recovering and that you need to dial back a little bit or dial down on the intensities or dial down on the long-term trainings or extend your training block out from nine days, maybe to 14 days to get in all the trainings that you need for your sport or for your event. So how do you track these th three things on a regular basis? Um, obviously, heart, um, body temperature can be done by an infrared reader that we've all been using for COVID. Very quickly can be done every morning and then recording that in training peaks or your own um, you know, Excel spreadsheet or just a little notebook of some sort. Um, so that when you start to see if there's a body temperature increase happening on a consistent basis, and it's not going to be a huge thing, it's like 0.1 or 2 degrees, um, that is that should get your attention and you need to be looking at your trainings to see if the, you can dial them down a little bit. Um, heart rate variability and um, resting heart rate, you know, can be done with a couple of devices. Like I'm wearing this Aura ring right here. I love this thing. I use it for many things that I'm, I'm monitoring, um, but it does record heart rate variability and your resting heart rate. Uh, another um, equipment uh, piece that you can utilize if you're, I like the ring because it's unobtrusive and um, it's easy to wear, but then there's uh, WHOOP, W-O-O-P bands that go around your wrist that will record similarly heart rate variability and resting heart rate and other things too. Um, another way, obviously, you can do your resting heart rate by just checking your heart rate yourself in the morning at your carotid artery or wearing, um, you know, a, um, a, a Garmin or a Polar um, GPS device that will also record heart rate if you leave it on overnight. Um, those get to be a little bit messy and a little bit less exacting, but those are other ways to do that. Um, the heart rate variability will be on the whoop strap. It will be on the aura ring. Um, there are phone apps that you can uh, record heart rate variability. They come with, you have to pay for them, but they'll come with a device that you can wear and that will also record your heart rate variability. Um, so there are several ways to get at those metrics that you can be, you know, and again, you have to be doing these metrics on a consistent basis in order to see the variance trends, because we're not looking for a one or two time variance. We're looking for trending either down on the heart rate variability up on the resting heart rate um, and um, up on the body temperature. So those are three things that you can use to start that can give you insight to catch when your body is being overtrained before it's, it starts to show up um, out on your trainings or in a race. Um, but you know, when you're out on your trainings, you also have other uh, metrics that you can use that will start to give you some insight when you are overtraining. Um, and so when we're training, we usually have heart rate response that we're using some sort of a, a device we're wearing a strap or a, you know, a wristband on your, um, GPS device, um, a power meter on your bike, um, speed on your bike, speed on your run pace. And what you're looking for is a uncoupling. You want to be looking at when you're looking at the same power output on a training ride that you do, but the train, the power is the same, but your heart rate response is higher. Um, the pace of your run is the same on the same course, you know, so given the same hills and flats, but your heart rate response is, is trending up on that same trending on that same training. Uh, but it's the same course, the same duration. So you're looking at an uncoupling of heart rate to output that is being objectively measured by either power or pace. You know, just looking at your heart rate, you might have a higher heart rate respond to a training, but you actually have a higher power output, you know, because you were refreshed and recovered. Um, you know, that's not, so looking at just heart rate or just looking at power itself is not enough to give you what you're looking for when you're trying to use the uh, metrics as insight as to when you might be overtraining. You have to have two heart rate with either speed, power, um, and heart rate together.
because when they start to uncouple, heart rate's going higher and you're either, the other um, indice is either going lower or staying the same, but your heart rate is rising at that same output of power or speed, then you know that you are not recovering and you that's a red flag to work within the what I was presenting in the first three episodes of this series and either, you know, extending your long trainings out with more recovery time or, you know, um, lessening the number of the high intensity trainings that you're doing um, within a nine or 12, um, 14 day period. So those are several things that you can use that um, can give you insight as to when you might be overtraining before you actually hit the wall. And they're all very valuable. They're relatively easy to track now. And uh, although younger people, you know, can use those as well, and I would recommend that when you're over 60, it becomes even more important because if you overtrain and you dig yourself into an overtraining uh, hole, I call it, it can take much longer to dig yourself out than when you were younger. So that's why it's so much more important when you're over 60 to be using these, um, you know, these insight uh, tools that we have to your biology and physiology and be monitoring them as you go, along with your, you know, uh, actual metrics out on the field. But those metrics also can give you um, insight if you're looking at two of them together and looking for an uncoupling where the heart rate is getting higher now at the same output. So heart rate, uh, resting heart rate, heart rate variability, core body temperature at rest, first thing in the morning is usually when I recommend you tracking that. Um, and then an uncoupling of your metrics out in the field and your trainings. Those are all things that are relatively easy to track now with either an aura ring, a whoop band, your GPS devices have this built in, Fitbits have these built in. Um, so there's a lot of methods, apps on the phone with an, an added piece that of equipment that comes with it to be tracking these things. And I highly, highly, as a 60 year old, um, endurance athlete myself and a coach to many athletes that are in the fifties and sixties and now seventies age range, like these things are imperative to your training. If you want to keep training and you don't want to, um, you know, either dread it or, you know, be noticing that your your fatigue factor is over becoming overwhelming when you want to keep doing what you love. All right. So this is episode number four in this six week uh, six part series on how to train as a endurance athlete over sixty. And so, uh, thank you for watching. Um, and as always, my goal with these uh, presentations that I'm putting out are. Let's make our second 50s even better than our first 50s. And everything I'm putting it out is to designed to help you to achieve that because that's what I want to achieve as well. And if you're finding value in these uh, in the series, please go to my website, www.judyterrell.com, where I have um, a multitude of things there that um, you can download that are also going to help your trainings when you're in your 50s and 60s and beyond. So please check that out as well. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Be well. Thanks for listening, everybody. And if you'd like to have access to some of my additional resources, I can be found at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and on my website, www.judyterrell.com.